in my Facebook group, I actually came across a comment thread that was very, very interesting and actually was something that I actually want to address and hopefully give some clarity on it and give my perspective on it. And I know I didn't really comment back to that comment thread except for saying thank you for sharing. And so in this video, I'm actually going to go through this comment thread and actually clarify it because I think there are a lot of people who were really discouraged by it. So I'm actually going to address it. So if you guys are interested, make sure you guys stick around. What's up, everyone? I hope you guys are all doing well. If you're new here, my name is Serge. Welcome to the channel. To all my reoccurring viewers, guys, thank you so much for all the love and support. I appreciate all of you guys. You guys have done so much for this channel. And if you haven't yet, make sure to go join the Facebook group that I've created called Legion Assisted Living Academy. I will link it down below and you guys can also go search it on Facebook. And make sure to answer the three questions prior to requesting yourselves into the group. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this comment thread and get this all clarified. Here is the comment thread, as you guys can see to the right, or just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And he goes through and explains uh, what this person is talking about. And the first thing I want to address actually is that... Okay, the first thing right here, the cost to get into business is astronomical. With the high risk this business I have this business has, I can't see any lender willing to take the risk loaning money when an investor does not already have extensive experience in this business. Start putting your cat own cash into this business and you are going to be shocked long before you get an occupancy permit. This business will not work better for you because you have a deep desire to help the elderly. All right, so the first thing I actually want to address with that first part is the cost. Guys, I actually made a video about this, and I will put it up here as well for you guys to go watch it. And I go over the cost of what it cost me to open up a five-bed facility, okay? And I said in that video, give or take about 50K. Uh, 50K is nowhere near as astronomical as a franchise in a restaurant. So if that's astronomical and if you wanted to 100k even uh, for a 10 bed okay um and go watch that video i talk about all the expenses that i personally had from my perspective i'm gonna have to disagree with that because i was able to start for way less than you know 50k or even about 50k so with that being said i don't understand why they think it's astronomical uh, there's so many different ways of doing it you don't need to necessarily go out and buy a property. Like I said, I'm renting mine. So it's there's so many different ways of doing it. But then he also goes on to say that no lender is willing to take the risk loaning money. And that I also disagree. You can do a hard money loan. And yes, you're not going to probably have the best terms because they are taking a risk on you and on the business. But then again, guys, there has there have been so many homes that have opened up so for me personally i've actually had lenders be willing to do it so that first part right there i also disagree with you can definitely find lenders you just have to find the right ones to work with and the way you find them is work with other people that are in the industry and figure out who they've used so for him to say that is kind of yeah absurd to be honest moving on um, here we go. It takes six months to more than one year to turn a home into the into a residential assisted living. You will need blueprints, he says. You will need contractors, building permits, and a lot of cash. And then he goes on to say there are thousands of huge assisted living facilities with hundreds of rooms, etc. that are ADA compliant, yada yada. He goes on, expect to spend 60000 to more than 100000 to make a home residential compliant. That the, that, and that depends on your city's local ordinances and building codes. You may not you may not be allowed to turn your home into a residential assisted living. Okay, he's got some point there, but he's also way off. Um, for instance, um, I personally did not have to do a lot of conversions, uh, as you call them, like he mentions here. And... I was able to do the bare minimum of turning my home into a residential assisted living by adding some ramps, adding literally some handrails in the bathrooms, 
Um, you guys know all this. I was able to do all this way less than 60 to 100,000. I mean, he's exaggerating at this point, guys. Like, I get where he's coming from, but also these massive assisted living facilities do not. Okay, he says here professional nurses on staff 24 7. Okay, he's talking about skilled nursing at this point. He's not even talking about. Remember, guys, this is non medical. You are not, it's not a hospital that you're trying to start here. You're, you're not going to have nurses on staff 24 7. Like, that's a hospital at that point. That's skilled nursing facilities, that's rehabs. And those are backed by, you know, government and all kinds of different investors, okay? Those are not like even anywhere. He's like, he's thinking like assisted living facilities, even these big box assisted living facilities are independent living. Like they don't even have nurses on staff. They literally have aides. They have assistants because most of those independent living big box facilities, the residents are able to move around on their own. So guys, that right there... It, and it takes six months to more than one year. Guys, that is so false. I literally started my assisted living facility within six months, easily within six months. So, and that all comes down to how fast zoning can get you approved because that's like the, that's the, that's the biggest hurdle I would say because zoning does take a while and, but does not take six months, guys. Like you can, if you're just slacking and you're like putting things off, yes, you could drag it out to six months. But if you're on top of it and you're getting things done, guys, six months to one year, that's excessive. That's so exaggerated. You're not building a commercial property. And he's talking about commercial properties here. So don't even pay attention to that. Then he says competition. This is a very competitive business and the little guy cannot compete with the big corporations. Relatives shop around and check out at least two to three facilities. Oh, what am I going to do? Okay. All right. This one, this one is so, this is ridiculous to be honest with you because competition in any industry is absurd. Everything is saturated at this point. Uh, I mean, everything is, you're not going to go around and think that like there's this business opportunity out there that's not saturated guys. What's going to make you stand out and be different compared to these big corporations is the fact that you're providing a warm, welcoming. Th these residents aren't going to be just numbers to you, okay? These residents are going to be like family to you, and families understand that. They'd rather actually work with smaller businesses like us who actually, you know, care about their loved one, and not they're not just some number in their little book, you know? Like they're. That's what the difference is going to be, and. Relatives can shop all the way like I've had family members come into my home and literally tell me how disgusted they are with big box facilities because of how negligent they are and how they don't really care and that that's going to show after a while. So guys, competition, competition. Competition is it, it should it should be a, a good thing for you guys. Like competition should be something where you look at your competitors, quote unquote, and you tell yourself, how can I be better or even just as good as them? Like, how do I get there? And how do I do that? So guys, competition is a good thing, especially if you're an entrepreneur. It's a towards, you should be working towards being better than your competition, like clearly that. So guys, you're not competing with big corporations. At the, you are, but you're not. I mean, it, there's such a huge spectrum in the healthcare field. You know, you got your big com corporations and you got your small little homes like us. And the spectrum is so, you know, you don't, I would say don't stress that so much. Don't be so discouraged by that. But moving on to number four here, um, you will be dealing with elderly people who don't have many years left and many of them don't have a lot of money. The average stay is less than two years. Many residents cannot afford to stay for long periods. Many residents pass away. Guys, I'm going to address that because he does, someone did reply to all of this and I'll go through their comment of what he talks about and you guys will see in a little bit why this is kind of like exaggerated and I will definitely go through. There's a large turnover on everything. Everything. There's no... 
consistent business model ever. Ever. I mean, I don't know what what's consistent. If there is, just tell me. I would be more than happy to hear you out because I don't, I mean, yes, residents are going to pass away. What? You think humans don't pass away? Of course they do. It's part of life. Like, I mean, I don't get that. Like, why? This guy clearly does not have a, a very, he doesn't have very good, like, perspective. Because, be honest, guys, like, is he, he's more worried about the turnover than taking care of the resident. Seriously, that's what that's what he's worried about, which you have to take in consideration vacancies and turnover. But come on, man, like people are going to die. That's what you, you should be willing to give them the best. Like that's their last stretch on life. And you should be worried about actually giving them the best, like the best, giving them the best stretch, you know, in their life at the end of their life. So and then he says, due to large turnover, you're constantly interviewing and searching for new residents. You'll have to try to get in with agencies who can refer your residents, and you also pay large referral fees. You had better be prepared to stay home 24-7 or you need employees. Then you'll be constantly interviewing, hiring, and terminating employees. Clearly, this guy's just not cut out to run a business, <laughs> to be honest. Like, yes. You're gonna have to interview employees, dude. Like, come on. You're there's not gonna be good employees, there's not gonna be bad employees. And yes, there's turnover and everything. Be willing to suck it up and get through it. Endure that. Like, come on. It's this is ridiculous what this guy's pointing out. Yeah, I get it. It's not like it's not ideal, but then again, there's turnover and everything. I mean, even rentals. In which he addressed this other gentleman that replied to all this, you know, said the same thing. So let's move on. Specially cooked meals. You will be taking care of elderly persons who have, may have dementia and are difficult to manage. They're paying you a lot of money and demand five star service. You will have residents who, who each need specially prepared meals three times a day, 365. Of course, bro. Like, I mean, come on, read this, guys. You will be responsible for administering medications at all different times of the day and liable for failure to administer the correct. Of course, dude. What does he think? It's an assisted living. Like, of course, you're going to be administering medications. And of course, you're liable. Everybody knows that. Like, it's pretty obvious. I mean, what? You thought, like, you could start an assisted living? And I'm sorry, guys. This is just kind of like common sense i mean he's pointing out things that are like not he's exaggerating everything to be honest because like be honest guys with yourselves there are so many uh, residential assisted livings okay they're like they're people are being successful at it and do you think they don't know all this you don't think they know labor nightmare lawsuits labor costs he goes on and on, and I'm going to get to the down to the quote or, or down to the comment of where he points out everything. Here we go. All right, so let's see where it's at. Okay. So then somebody, I, I feel like I know who this person may be who reply back to all this negativity, goes on to read all of this, okay? He goes on to say, I've owned and operated a residential assisted living homes for six years and I've had a very different experience. The comment of yours that gave me the most concern was number eight regarding lawsuits. So lawsuits, guys, I've been at this just over a year and a half now and nobody's... I don't have any pending lawsuits. I don't have anything of that sort. Okay, so he goes on to say, you said that homes you were involved with had an average of two pending lawsuits each. I can only assume those were larger institutions. Is that correct? If they're residential assisted living homes, that would be outrageously high. I agree with him on that. It clearly, there's, he's, this other person who's saying all these negative things clearly is in a huge big box facility because come on i mean you're not taking care of 30 to you know plus residents you're taking care of maybe the most 15 depending on what state you're in uh, you will have a 
pretty good idea of how your residents are doing and making sure that they're being satisfied with all their needs and making sure you're staying on top of everything. So if there are lawsuits, it's not on it's on him for not properly taking care of the residents. I mean, it clearly had to be something that he didn't do right. So all right. Then he goes on in six years, I haven't had any lawsuits and none are pending either. So that's great. That's good. And then here you go. Uh, let's see. He addresses a lot of things, guys. You guys can slowly read through here. Um, this is a, such a good topic and such a good thread to go through. But uh, here we go. So he says this. So, yes, we are always looking for new residents even when the home is full. No business is static. I love that because no business is. And then he goes on to say, this is just like a real estate wholesaler or a fix and flip professional. They are constantly looking for the next property. With Airbnb, you're always looking for the next renter, etc. Again, no business is static. 100% no business is static. So he makes a very, very valid point there. He's like, there's so much more that I could comment on, but I will stop with that. In my opinion, residential assisted living is a great business and opportunity for the right person. I love that. And that's so true. It's not all about the money, but the money is great too. Guys, keep that in mind. It's not all about the money. If it's all about the money, you're going to be like that other guy. You're not going to be like this guy being positive and understanding of what they're getting themselves into. So understand that, guys. And he's like, I hope things get better. He says, I agree with you that one, that anyone is that is thinking of getting into this industry should learn all they can before they do. So guys, of course, that is why you guys are watching my channel and why you guys are learning uh, through other channels and whatnot. Because you guys want to know what it's all about. And it is not simply a real estate investment like he goes on to say. There's a lot to it. As they say, it is simple but not easy. There's a lot of need today and the demand is increasing by day. I agree. Demand is literally increasing by day. Guys, listen. I do still get calls. My home is full right now. And I still get calls every single day or maybe every other day if I have any vacancies. Because guys, keep in mind, once you start catching traction and once you go on to start filling your beds, you're going to build a reputation for yourself and, your, and for your business. And people are gonna start referring to you. And you're going to ultimately get calls all the time. So be patient with it is what I would tell you guys. And understand that as long as you keep at it and you keep moving forward, even when there's there is vacancies or you're not completely full, you'll be just fine. Seriously, you'll be just fine. He goes on, everyone is going to get involved in it. This is, I love this part the most because he goes on to say, everyone is going to get involved in it one way or the other. And what he means by that, he's like, you'll either own the real estate, own and operate the business, which you want to do both if you can, or you or family member will be lying in a bed writing a check to someone that does have a residential assisted living. Okay, so who do you want to be pretty much at this point? Do you want to be the one just owning the real estate? Because you can definitely do that if you don't feel like the risk of operating an assisted living is not for you. Okay, then secondly, you can be just operating the business and leasing the property like I'm doing currently. Okay, or you can do all three and I mean, or just do two. And then if you're not doing the first two, you're definitely going to end up doing the third one. You're going to be the one writing the check to whoever does have a residential assisted living because they didn't get all caught up in all the negativity and all the pessimistic and all the doubts that people put in your head. Because guys, I am 23 years old. I am doing this as we speak. And the, he, he, the person that was being negative mentioned that 1% of people succeed in residential assisted living. 1%. Which I have to disagree with that, guys. I see so many people literally succeeding in this. And you guys can too. And I want you guys to succeed in it. And that's the purpose of my channel. That's why we're here. That's why I've created the Facebook group. Because I want to encourage you guys and show you guys that it is possible that if this is something that you're passionate about or you're wanting to create a, leg a legacy for your family or leave something for your family, you guys can definitely do it. And 
that that is what I want to tell you guys. You guys have to believe in yourselves and then everything else will start working for you guys. Everything will start lining up. And if you guys don't believe that, then don't believe it. That's on you guys. But I mean, at this point, you know, uh, he made some very valid points and thank you Mr. Justin Owens for sharing this on the Facebook group. Really I appreciate it. And guys, just make sure that just make sure that you guys don't get so caught up in everything else that's going on. Um, this was a really good thread. And if you guys haven't joined the Facebook group and read this thread, please go read it because it really does point out some amazing points in there. And it really points out some things that you guys need to definitely consider. But then again, he does exaggerate. The person that's being negative does exaggerate what's really going on in the business and how the business is really uh, going. So, cause I'm speaking from my experience and actually doing it. And for me personally, I would have to disagree with that. Residential assisted living is definitely something everyone should consider. And I really want you guys to succeed at it. And I'm looking forward to seeing more success stories in the Facebook group and Guys, you guys are doing so great in everything that you guys are doing, and you guys inspire me every single day, and I love making these videos for you guys. So if you guys stuck all the way to the end, I know this has been a, a, a dragged out video, a longer video than I anticipated, and, but if you guys enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, guys, and go watch all these other videos. They're very informative, and guys, thank you again. I appreciate you all, and I'll see you in the next video. God bless. Peace.